now that I've had a little bit of time to use the uh, Graco handheld sprayer, and it's still wet, I just got done cleaning it out. But anyway, guys, I've sprayed uh, two gallons of material with it so far a gallon of primer and a gallon of finish. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Alright guys, here's the good, the bad, and the ugly on the Graco True Coat Pro 2 sprayer. One of the first things that I really like about it is the fact that the pickup on it is weighted and on a flexible hose so you can shoot straight down or straight up and it'll still pick up the paint or primer whatever you're shooting the tip it came with is a 515 tip or a 517 tip what is it yeah it's a 515 but that puts out just a little wider fan than I care for. It'd be perfect for doing, uh, you know, large surfaces. I think this puts out a uh, 10 to 12 inch fan. So I went and got the different tip. And it's, uh, it puts out a 6 to 8 inch fan, which I prefer. Especially doing stuff like this. I don't want to blast a whole bunch of excess paint all around the shop. So I like that narrower fan. I think it was about $35 for that tip. But anyway, guys, I'm getting ready to shoot uh, primer, the second coat of primer on these pedestals. Just using PPG's Speed Hide Interior Latex Sealer right out of the five gallon bucket. And what I've done is I've double strained it I strain it out of the five into the single gallon just to make it more manageable. And then when I pour it from the single gallon into my gun, I'll go ahead and strain it again just to make sure. I mean, you know how it is, guys. When you're spraying paint through a small orifice, you want to give yourself every chance possible. Everybody hates messing with a clogged gun. We'll uh, do some more follow-up on this, and, and I'll use it some more. I'll bring you guys in when I shoot the finish on these with it. And we'll see how that turns out. And then I'll give you my full opinion on the Graco True Coat, 2, True Coat Pro 2 sprayer. Alright guys, I'm getting ready to shoot the finish coat on those pedestals. And what I'm using here is Devo's DoveFlex HP. Yeah, PPG bought out Devo several years back, so it's actually PPG for the most part. But it's an eggshell finish. They wanted eggshell because they wanted something, uh, you know, that wasn't going to be super shiny or anything. So we went with eggshell, and this DoveFlex HP is an excellent product. Um, takes about two weeks to fully cure but once it's fully cured man this stuff is hard as a rock but yeah I'm gonna see how it performs with the true coat pro 2 sprayer of course I'm still using the uh, smaller fan tip same size orifice both of the tips that I have I've got uh, the black one and the green one the black one puts out a larger fan this green one puts out a smaller fan 
same size orifice, same size or same amount of materials coming out, but just a, a smaller fan. So you can see here too, this paint is considerably thicker than the primer I shot. The primer, I shot it on the lowest setting there, which is I don't know how well you can see that, but it's set clear down to number one. So that's the lowest amount of pressure that this thing does, and it did just fine shooting the primer. So we're going to see how it does shooting the finish coat. Here's what we've got after the first coat of finish and I don't know how well that's showing up on camera I can see it in the viewfinder here but I don't know if it's going to show up in the video you'll notice the tiger striping going on that sprayer kind of pulses and each time the the motor makes a revolution or each time it it uh, pressures up so the, I don't know, it kind of tiger stripes. But for a latex finish, that's just fine. Um, I mean, that's not going to show up when it's dry. And it's certainly not going to show up with the second coat. And here we are with the final coat of finish. Yeah, the lighting in here kind of lacks, guys. I'm sorry. But, uh... I don't know how well you guys can see that but yeah it came out pretty decent got some orange peeling see if I can get you in some light where you can see it yeah I don't know how well you can see that but there's some orange peeling in it which should die down some once the paint dries of course I just got done shooting that second coat so it's still wet wet. The good, it's a huge time saver. Um, I don't know what I did with this. Probably saved me at least 15-20 hours of work. So it's paid for itself right there for the library at least. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the bad. The battery tends to run out real fast. You've got about five, ten minutes maximum trigger time per battery before you got to unplug it and, and let it charge. Of course, it came with two batteries, so you know that uh, it's okay. I mean, you can do, you could probably do a ceiling in a room, you could probably do a single wall. You could probably do all the trim, maybe a door frame and your baseboards and, and a door and the door trim in a single room on two batteries. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, as far as, as being cordless and convenient, yeah, that's nice. But like I said, that's just, it's a super high torque motor in it. I mean, it's got to be. It pushes the paint, uh, you know, it 
I'm not sure, 2,500, 3,000 PSI or whatever it is. So yeah, it's going to suck battery quick. Um, another one of the bad parts about it is even though it's, it's very, very nicely balanced, right now I've got it full of the pump armor. I've got my spray tips down in there. Um, it's very nicely balanced, however, it gets super heavy after about five minutes. If you're spraying something, I mean, your arm is going to get fatigued big time. Like I said, I've got it full of water, or the pump armor right now. Um, and I'm probably looking at 10, 12 pounds. So yeah, full of paint, and then with your battery on there and everything, it's, it's quite, quite heavy. Um, I mean, it does spray a nice finish. It sprayed a, a pretty good finish. I was using latex. And, uh, yeah, the cleanup is about 15 minutes, maybe, per cleanup. Of course, you guys know the deal. <clears throat> you got to clean out your cup and fill it with clean uh, water, solvent, thinner, whatever you're using. And I was using latex paint, water-based paint. And if you're familiar with water-based versus solvent-based paints, water-based paints are a lot harder to clean up with water than solvent-based paints are to clean up with solvent or thinner. That's just the nature of the beast. So everybody says, oh yeah, it's easy and convenient and water cleanup and all that. I'd rather have solvent clean up and run it through the gun a couple times and it's clean. With the water, uh, I probably, I probably clean out the uh, the uh, cup there five or six times, fill it with clean water five or six times, run it through, run it until it's running clean. It just takes forever to clean up water-based paint with water. Um, yeah, it's convenient because water is everywhere, but it's inconvenient because it just takes a long time. But anyway, yeah, back to the gun, guys. Um, if you're looking to save a lot of time and put on a nice, even finish, it's well worth the money. If uh, you need something that's going to spray a whole bunch of paint, this isn't going to do it for you unless you want to stop in between and let your batteries charge. Uh, you're probably going to, at least with the water-based paint I was using, about one cup full of paint or about a quart of paint per battery so like I said about five to ten minutes trigger time and your battery's done um, you have absolutely no warning when the battery dies of course that's with all of your lithium-ion battery tools they just you know they don't they don't uh, you know fall off they just kind of die dead all of a sudden uh, which will cause paint spit you know I had a couple of little spitters there where the battery just flat out died and it it was halfway through pushing some paint and just kinda you know gave out um, so yeah there's a few things that you have to be aware of while using it such as your paint spits when the battery's getting ready to die your paint spits when the cup runs out. Um, I mean, that's just, but that's normal paint sprayer stuff. Um, it spits right at the end of a trigger squeeze, so you just have to make sure that you let off while pointed away from uh, whatever your workpiece is. But yeah, all in all, guys, if you get used to using it and everything, it's it's a great deal. It it really is. Um, like I said, I've sprayed about two gallons of material, and that was over the course of three different days. So I cleaned it out, stored it overnight, cleaned it out, stored it for over the weekend, came back in, shot some more primer with it, cleaned it out, and shot the finish with it here just you know, a couple hours ago, just got done, and just got done cleaning it out. But yeah, all in all, guys, that's going to meet the man bog seal of approval. Uh, like I said, just in my time savings alone, it's paid for itself. And like I said, it's not, you know, it's not the best handheld sprayer on the market, but it's not the worst either. You know, the, uh, 
the cheapy $29, $39 ones, they're nowhere near what this one is. And this one has its issues, but I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. The, uh, it, it sprays paint. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. You just have to work with it a little bit and learn it. And, and you guys know the deal. Anybody who's ever sprayed paint knows that every gun has its own nuances and you've got to figure out things. And, but like I said, the Graco True Coat Pro 2 meets my seal of approval. This thing will be getting a lot of use. Y'all have a good one, and we'll talk to you later.